distinguished guests, and good afternoon and good, good evening, depending where you are, because this is being carried live around the world, and we have many people watching as well. It's my great pleasure and honor indeed to host the session of the 2021 South South Human Rights Forum, putting people first and global human rights governance. My name is Lushin. I'm from CGTN. I'm host of The Point with me, Liu Xin. It's a great honor and a surprise. I would luxury even to see all of you here in person. Great, great privilege to have this kind of occasion where we, are, we have the right to connect, especially with our friends from the country. So the warmest welcome to all of you. It is an extremely important topic we're going to discuss today. And as I said, the theme is putting people's first, putting people first, and human rights governance. We have several sub agenda as well, and these sessions will be on momentarily. In terms of uh, the protection of human rights, the challenges we can say have been full of challenges. The COVID-19. public health. And the economic challenges faced by developing countries in general against the backdrop of the global pandemic reminds us that human rights protection and development and people's livelihood are closely intertwined. At the same time, the humanitarian and human rights crisis out of geopolitical crisis have also made us reflect on how to improve global human rights. It is against these backdrops that China have uh, published multiple white papers on human rights and progress for what China has been doing to the COVID-19 pandemic, what China has been doing in eliminating extreme poverty, what China has done in building a moderately prosperous society, a Xiao Kang, and uh, China cooperation in the new era, and I'm extremely to see many African friends present joining us on site. So these documents not only detailed what China believes in and what China has been doing in terms of promoting human rights development, but also the experiences and lessons China have been able to witness and draw in terms of human rights as a case in point other developing countries in their development. Against this backdrop, we are convening here to talk about how to put people first and how to global human rights governance. I believe this discussion provide new impetus and new inspirations, not just for other common, other developing countries, but we hope that we can penetrate the global public discourse and make our voice heard by more people not just in the global south, but from everywhere around the globe. So ladies and gentlemen, let's start with our plenary session. And I have the to welcome our first speaker, Vice President of China Society of Human Rights, Vice Chairman of the Supervisory and Judicial Committee of China's National People's Congress, Mr. Xu Xianming. Six minutes, eight, eight minute, please. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my honor to pay in the 2021 South South Human Rights Forum. Time goes by very and is limited. I would like to share with you the points my vision. First one is that 21 is uh, an unusual for the uh, human rights because there are four things that, is, that will be remembered as historical event. First, in 2021, the year marks the centenary of the CPT. 
the Communist Party of China. At just now, the opening ceremony, Minister, His Excellency Mr. His Excellency Mr. Huang Keming made an observation which I agreed that um, over the past year, Yes, so since the founding of CPC, they have led the Chinese people in a tenacious struggle for human rights, to call for human rights, to promote and develop and protect human rights. The last 100 years has been a path forged ahead by the Chinese people under the leadership of CPC, and that is something significant to remember by all of us. In the resolution adopted at the sixth plenary session of the CPC Central Committee, uh, it was also in the review of the historical experiences as the major achievements. The second thing of significance is that the presidency's thoughts on human rights also published into publications. He as Alexis is made in the series of books that the development for human rights protection and promotion in China has evolved into a comprehensive system. And it is a combination of Marxist ideologies and also the practices and national conditions of China. It is an innovation in itself, and also it is a creation. It is an integral, important part of a seized on law-based development based governance, it will be a guiding principle and fundamental principle that the Chinese development will be conducted. China also has uh, adopted its uh, 14th to 5-year plan. The plan also has covered the China, Chinese progress on human rights development. It has laid long-term prospects for human rights development in China. The fourth significance that happened this year is that it is the fourth Year, it is the starting year of the next five years on the human rights development, starting from this year till the year of 2025. China has a new era of human rights development. During the main tasks is to a high quality of human rights development. That is the first thing that I will share with you. Back to the theme of year. This forum as, 20, uh, as putting first people first and uh, global human rights governance. Human rights should be approached, approached by all the countries through communication. However, human rights should be defined and based on their own national conditions and should be enshrined in their constitutions to protect rights is the basis. How are three categories of human rights that can only be realized through international cooperation? Just now, the chairman of our Congo Human Rights Committee shared with us that in the Declaration of Human Rights, when the whole landscape for the global human rights were set forth in the declaration, there was an ocean, a notion called the equal right. However, put in place, however, in the High Commission of Rights of the UN and the and other high commissions, including the security, although it is not its uh, responsibility to deal with the matters of human rights, however, it is
than of other countries. They use colonies uh, of other countries. So they uh, they titled to the right to develop by themselves. After putting forward the notion of a right to development, uh, we haven't found the right approach to a uh, uh, right approach and instrument to fulfill the right of development for a very long time How, until we had WTO be established. It was one of the earliest instruments in place to ensure the South global South countries. It is the 8th of December today, three years later, to celebrate the anniversary of China's entry to WTO. I still remember, uh, recall very clearly, uh, at 12 o'clock, when I heard the Gareth uh, banging on, declaring the confirmation of China's uh, entry to the WTO. China indeed has undergone tremendous changes. Back then, the GDP total only to 1.3 trillion. Now is 15 trillion. In 2001, U.S. GDP was uh, more than 10 trillion, and China was only one tenth or eight uh, one eighth of it. Now. Uh, China's uh, GDP takes uh, that of the total nearly 20 percent. Now China has made achievement that is equivalent to the, equi the achievements made in a total 100 years before the Opium War in 1840. That is sufficient to prove that the WTO is one of the most effective instruments through which uh, countries can develop. However, we are seeing some countries are attempting to destroy such good international organizations. Uh, the, the gentleman who put forward the idea of right to development has already retired from his position. However, the conflicts and uh, the attempts to subvert such international organizations has not ceased, unfortunately. The third right is right that we were all reviewed by the pandemic. We have uh, come to realize more than ever that right to health of all humanity has and can only be guaranteed and fulfilled through multilateralism, through international cooperation. China made solemn pledges to the world to reach uh, peak uh, carbon emission by 2030 and to reach carbon neutrality by 2030. While we are having pandemic going on at the same time and dealing with fighting with the crisis of the uh, climate uh, crisis, climate change, some uh, studies have been conducted to seek between these two. There are links uh, because the pandemic as a respiratory disease will be, the virus will be carried uh, by via air atmospheric uh, medium. So that is why I'm saying that no one can win the battle against uh, the virus, the pandemic on own. In 2019, uh, con more than 100 countries have uh, rectified agreement to fight against the clom uh, climate uh, change crisis. That's why we need a collective effort. I believe that these three rights are at the core of international governance. So um, that's my second point. Thirdly, multilateralism, how to follow this multilateralism in true sense. First, we should stand firmly against the unilateralism hegemony and uh, the philosophy of taking side. Many speakers during the opening ceremony talked about the so-called democracy summit that will be held in the United uh, Nations. It is an another way of forcing countries to take inside. It is against the trend to, of multinatural, multinaturalism. There is no country in the world to say that uh, we can find the human rights. No country has the right to do this. 
So we stand firmly against unilateralism, hegemony, and the philosophy of taking sides. The principle of multilateralism, there are several of the principles that are the spirit of it. First, openness and inclusiveness. In terms of human rights issues, we are living in a global village. So we should build a platform together. It is not a job of a certain country or certain region. Second, we should form a shared standard based on international law. Currently, states are promoting the international orders based on rules. There is actually a trap uh, mentioned by the, uh, Madam uh, Shan from She said that uh, if one country is uh, making rules for the world, uh, there is no equity in such rules. What kind of rules are we going to follow? That are the rules of international law. Well, the international law is defined by the Charter of the UN, and that is the principle we should follow as mankind. So the human rights should be based on the rules made by international law. Third, I believe we should uh, push forward uh, the uh, co-construction of uh, uh, human rights results. Uh, these results of human rights progress is, uh, are not belonging to any certain countries. So in the end, we should also um, keep up with the times. So multilateralism in the realm of uh, human rights progress from uh, generation 1.0 to 2.0 to 3.0, we will see an even brighter future in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I have taken away four numbers, 4343. Three. What about you? Four big events, three common rights, four principles, and the last three. <laughs> Leave that for you to think about. Next, let's welcome Mr. Moses Nakamoto, former Prime Minister of Guyana. Let's welcome. Dear friends, greetings. At this critical time of crisis due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it is more crucial than ever to put people first and to redefine global human rights standards and goals. This South-South Human Rights Forum is therefore very, very important. During February this year, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres had warned that if the virus is allowed to spread like wildfire in the global south, it will mutate again and From latest data and scientific facts, this has since become the truth, a situation that the WHO had foreseen as the world being on the brink of a catastrophe and moral failure. Clearly, humanity is On Saturday last, the New York Times reported that high and upper middle income countries, 74% of COVID shots administered worldwide. Only 0.8% of doses went to low income countries, the global south, which is mostly outside of North America. This is not just a moral failure by the global, global north that prattles about human rights, but a neglect even at this time when the death toll has reached 5.3 million people worldwide. It is an inconvenient truth that the rich and powerful north 
has abandoned people in the South, the so-called Third World. This should come as no surprise. Such callous response rooted in its genes of self-interest and narrow nationalism. A quick glance at the tiny Caribbean region in which I was born would be enough to expose the inhumane history of imperialist hegemony. We survive over three centuries of subjugation under its colonial and neo-colonial yoke, under slavery and dictatorship. As a part of the global south, ours has been a history of blood, sweat, tears, neglect, and poverty. On November 30 at last, when the tiny island became public, Prince Charles, heir to the British imperial throne, apologized for that dark history and the pains that slavery had caused people of the Indian. Never have we erased our disdain of poverty, utter disregard for you, the most elementary being, the right to life. The United Nations has stated that poverty is not just low income or no income, but hunger and malnutrition and lack of basic needs, self care and access to drinking water. When we observe International Day of Eradication of October, the United Nations estimated 1.3 billion people live in poverty. The World Bank projected that in 2021, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, between 143 and 163 million of poor would mainly from Asian and African countries. I submit that this ghastly specter of grinding poverty and death haunts the world as the biggest human rights issue today to life. For democracy to have real meaning, it must advance the of the people, not rich, class, race, or state. Democracy cannot be the fig leaf that hides the ugly geopolitical and chick interests of powers that masquerade as the world policeman. We cannot and must not be locked into the prescriptions for human rights that are only political and lip service to economic, social, and ethnic rights of our peoples, mainly in the global south. For us, democracy must not be a periodic ritual or an census in multicultural societies where when one half of the people is in government, the other half is locked out. Dear friends, I have given the above as context for the need to have democracy in our countries that put people first. The old democracy has exploited us, dominated us, divided us, used us, left in poverty. We need a model of our democracy under which protection and promotion of human rights and the rule of law become the goal of good government. This model must be based on the historical experiences and common values in our multi-ethnic and multiple societies. In this regard, I submit, China is a good example of this new democracy. China is a South member state, the population of more than 1.4 million, hitherto poor and impoverished people. It has made stupendous progress, having lifted some 100 million of its rural residents out of poverty. The IMF and the World Bank have placed China's GDP growth at 8.5% and per capita GDP to over US $10,000. China has shown that our countries can and must find independent paths to development. Excellency President Jinping has defined this new democracy, which people first and supports 
global human rights and through multilateralism. In his recent address at the United Nations, President related how China is reading a new chapter in its development of humanity. He stated, I quote, development and happy lives are the common aspirations of people in all countries. Development is meaningful only if it is for the people's interest. It can sustain only when it is motivated by the people. Countries should put their people front and center, unquote. My friends, I submit with confidence and conviction that if we are to define this democracy that puts people first and respects global human rights governance, we should look at the Chinese example. I concur with and visionary words from President Xi. And I quote once again, we should vigorously advocate peace, development, justice, democracy, and which are the common values of humanity, and work to provide the right philosophy for building a better world. Peace and development are our common cause. Equity and justice are a common aspiration, and democracy and freedom are a common pursuit." I, unquote. My friends, I thank you for inviting me to this forum, and I wish you confidence every success. Thanks to Mr. Nagam for bringing us voices in his part of the world, extremely well as well. Next, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together to welcome members of the party group and director of academic committee of the China Law Society, Mr. Zhang Wenxian. On the global stage, there are two key words. First, democracy. Second, human rights. Today, I'm going to develop my speech themed around these two key words. First, the essence of democracy lies in human Democracy and human rights are closely related and inseparable. First of all, human rights are the common values and the common pursuit of mankind. Birth. The Communist Party of China clearly written on its banner. Second, democracy is an important human right and it is a political of decisive significance. The people are the masters of the country, of the society, and of themselves, and the masters of state power. This is itself a fundamental and comprehensive human right. Third, democracy is for human rights. From a historical point of view, the people of all countries built a democratic political foundation for human rights and the development of human rights only after the successful revolution and uh, had democratic facts and the uh, system in China. It is precisely because of the great victory of the democratic revolution led by the CPC that we made a great leap from a feudal autocracy that lasted thousands of years to people democratic politics and that the Chinese people started to real independence. Democracy is 
Democracy is not only an important human right, but also is a gar important guarantee of rights in other respects. A true democracy cannot and will not have real human rights. In that sense, no democracy, no human rights. Without substance in its human rights, is as fake democracy. Secondly, I want to make the point that institutional innovation to promote and protect human rights. People's democracy life allows for socialism. Without democracy, there will be no and so social modernization of socialist development. As China is ushered in the era to develop with the Chinese characteristics, the challenges have also been different than the past. The Chinese people are having uh, an increasingly higher expectations towards democracy, based law-based governance, equity, safety, environment. Democracy has become a key factor in making, in, in short, people can live a better life, and thus it is put in the top priority. In accordance with uh, living up to the expectations of its people for better and higher quality of uh, democracy, President Xi Jinping developed the key concept of a people's whole process, people's democracy. People's whole process, people's democracy is not does not have for the whole complete procedures, but also is tested in extensive participation. It the public to express their requirements without hundreds. If people will only be awakened and courted for their vote, after that, to hibernation, that is not true democracy. If only when voting are given verbal promises, but without uh, fulfillment of this promise, uh, fulfillments of this business. If uh, they were only caught for the votes, but without uh, giving action after the election, it is not the real democracy. Therefore, the best way to tell that democracy works is that whether it, it reflects the theme of the democracy process people's democracy develop is an important content to humanization. It gives full expression to the and protection of human rights. By simply voting, the whole process democracy, people's democracy is not a game of numbers. However, it is a mirror. As President Xi Jinping that all should be collectively discussed and decided by the people with its Full consent should be reached to making decisions as much as possible before reaching consensus among all parties. Therefore, voting and election as the in China has a strong Chinese characteristics. It also is beneficial to the exercise of political of its people in more dialogue to reach a social consensus, to respect the rights of uh, minority groups and vulnerable groups, and to, to opinions from all world and sectors of life, uh, give full channels for them to get requirements. Rules can fundamentally make compliments to the defects that are inherently remained in the liberal uh, democratic systems. Therefore, through a comprehensive, extensive, and uh, organically integrated uh, democratic system, um, uh, putting the peoples uh, as the masters of the countries, consultation, dem consultative democracy has become a important uh, element towards the of this basic rights protection scheme. A system is that. Uh, process people's democracy further advances the foundation of rights of political foundations. 
Chinese people's democracy is not only the foundation for the political uh, democratic politics, but also it is an important institution for further promotion and protection of human rights. People's democracy is an important powerhouse for human rights course. To develop a proposed democracy will support the advancement of human rights development in China. Hope people's democracy will vigorously expand the prospects enjoyed by the Chinese characteristics human rights development model and also to promote more further expansion and development human rights development in China and also let its people enjoy the benefits of the human rights development in political, economic, cultural, social, and ecological aspects. Especially through the whole process of people's democracy, people's potential can be unleashed to build more wealth, prosperity in which they will live, and also to realize a high quality level. Uh, of uh, human rights development. Third, process people's democracy is a great creation and uh, innovation of the theory of human rights. Third, people's democracy is not only innov innovative in theory, but also in practice. President Xi Jinping has not only developed a key new concept, but also has um, put forward a new paradigm for the studies of hu human rights studies, giving us guidelines to set up uh, the, put, up, put us in the right for that uh, human rights, uh, the way we think, the way we observe, and also the way we, we judge, examine and review practices and human rights issues. Guided by the whole process of people's uh, democracy theory faced the challenges go to promote a people's uh, process, people's democracy system that covers all aspects of democratic and all sectors of society, will not only be enriching the right by the people, but also expand the application scope of the theory. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Zhang. To elaborate the relationship between especially how process people's to be with uh, human rights and uh, socialism. Thanks once again to Mr. Zhang. Next, let's welcome Ms. Isabel de Sant Malo, former president and foreign minister of Panama. Hello, it is my pleasure to address the 2021 South-South Human Rights Forum. I would like to start by thanking the State Council Information Council Information Office and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for extending this invitation to me. Also, thank the China Council on Knowledge on Development for organizing a session on the topic of putting people first and global human rights governance. Today, more than ever, we must global governance and multilateral bodies to address global problems. Yet. The multilateral system faces challenges and threats as many as its institutions and mechanisms. There's no way forward to the many threats faced by the collection commitment to multilateral bodies, particularly the United Nations as the organization for peace building and peacekeeping. For those of us who believe in the values of justice, human rights, and development, the call to defend those institutions with which provide us with the best hope, realizing our collective promises and values as enshrined in the Treaty of the United Nations is as present as ever. Beginning with recognition that multilateralism has underpinned peace, security, and prosperity across the world since the United Nations. The UN remains more than ever. An indispensable actor in facing contemporary threats from pandemics like deadly COVID-19 that we have faced and are still facing to climate change and the fight against poverty. As COVID-19 continues to place a threat to people's right to life and an increasing challenge with important setbacks in recent advancements. 
The world has seen great progress, but it is still with significant development challenges. Poverty still hundreds of millions and income inequality continues to address these challenges. World leaders unanimously adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in 2015, with its 17 sustainable goals, 169 targets, 132 individual indicators. The 2030 Agenda is ambitious in scope and covers nearly all aspects of development. But so it aims to ensure a more sustainable and future where no one is left behind. With the concept of leaving no one behind at its heart, the 2030 Agenda places strong emphasis on inclusive development. Recognizing the development gains did not always reward and vulnerable, and that certain population groups remain at a large disadvantage. Inclusive development is integrated through 17 goals. This is our roadmap. And this is a clear road. The discussion on human rights governance poses challenges for many countries, developed or underdeveloped, from the north and from the south, on all countries, and China is no exception. While there are many countries around the world that are great for their high respect for human rights, many still have steps to be taken to advance. But human rights is of great value. It's feedback, measurement, and insight, allowing countries to evaluate that feedback, learn from it, and take concrete steps to improve. To address the subject of human rights in this forum, one must take note China's own of putting people's rights to subsistence and development first. In this regard, chances are undeniable. China's human development rose from 501 to 0.761 between 19 and 2019, putting the country in the high human development category according to the 2020 Human Development Report. This development index value position the country at 85 to 189 countries. Since the human index was introduced in 19, China is the only country in the world who moved from the low development group to the high development goal, making China's development progress over the last three decades remarkable. China's 2019 Human Development Index of 0.761 is above the average of 7.53 for countries in the right high human development group and above the average of 0.747 for countries in East Asia and the Pacific. According to the report, China's life expectancy at birth has increased in nine years in 1990 to 76.9 years in 2019. The expected years of school have increased from 8.8 .8 years to 14. Not a minor advantage. Beyond the right to development, China has recognizes that human rights for all is a shared aspiration of humanity. The government further expresses pride in efforts to participate on international rights instruments, including participation on the rounds of universal periodic review. And serving as a member of the Human Rights Commission. I take note as well of China's expression of commitment to conduct constructive dialogue and cooperation on human issues and agree there that there is always for At the core 
of human rights governance and declaration of human rights. Proclaimed in 1948, setting common standards, the Office of the High Commissioner is a UN entity on human rights and as such represents the world's commitments to the protection of the full range of human rights as defined by the declaration. In this framework, I urge to the prompt facilitation of a visit by the UN. The messages of the High Commissioner expressing interest to China to look into allegations abuses, particularly regarding the Uyghurs in Xinjiang, is an opportunity to receive feedback and establish a roadmap. As part of China, progressive advances and development and take it of the position plain political motive behind the reports of abuses, I believe it is time for China to take a step further and invite the High Commissioner to engage in a core dialogue leading to the of I encourage this forum to incorporate into the discussion that while the rights systems in government are based governance or vice that goes well beyond that. My messages stemmed from my personal behind genuine interest of cooperation and dialogue and collaboration with my lateral and multilateral I had the established my diplomatic relationship between my Panama and People's Republic. This effort gave the opportunity to interact with high levels of President Xi Jinping, Minister Wang Ji, and others. It is from this experience that I strongly believe that China is ready to a step on human rights and on rights, global governance particularly. Ready to embrace its community and for And I thank you very much for the invitation to address this forum and congratulate China in the interest of receiving heartfelt it is through cooperation that inclusive development of human rights advance. This forum undoubtedly provides a framework for enhanced cooperation through sustainable and changes. Thank you. Many thanks, Madam Descent Mallow. I would say China has always been national dialogue cooperation on human rights. And I've had on multiple um, occasions where engaged intensively in international dialogue and cooperation. Um, inspe uh, not inspection, I would say, uh, questions and scrutiny on human rights. I think China has been doing that, and of course, there is a lot to do. And in terms of Xinjiang, China has invited journalists and diplomats and functionaries from the United Nations included to visit Xinjiang multiple times, many, many times. And actually, many foreign diplomats used to go there. I don't Anyway, let's go on with our discussion. Next, please welcome Mr. Paramagamba Kabudi, Minister for Constitution and Legal Affairs and former Foreign Minister of Tanzania. Minister of the Publicity Department Committee of the Communist Party of China. Honorable Mr. Ma Zapsu, Vice Minister of Colonial Affairs of the People's of China. Honorable Ministers and Excellencies, Representatives of international organizations, Representatives of civil society organizations, ladies and gentlemen, invited guests. I will start by conveying salutations from the President of the Republic of Tanzania, her Excellency Samia Suru Hassan. Her Excellency, the President, is a strong advocate of putting people first in the Roman agenda and in the realization of fundamental freedoms and human rights. For the theme of this year's South South Human Rights Forum, putting people first and the global human rights 
resonates with our human rights policies and national development agenda vision 2020. I also convey greetings from the government and the people of the United Republic of Tanzania who are engaged with celebrations and preparation of the years of independence of mainland Tanzania, Tanganyika as it was then known, the former German colony and later trusted territory of the United Nations and the British administration, which will come late tomorrow, the 9th of December 2021. Therefore, as we contemplate the demise of global imperialist and colonial system, governance system of the past and the independence of our country, our focus on a different regime which is people-centered, rights-based, and duty-inspired. The promotion and the protection of human rights, which was articulated resoundingly through the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948, has evolved into a tangible concept and permanently in national good governance regime, and has self itself evolved into a global governance system. Distinguished guests, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights firmly placed civil and political rights at par with the economic, social, and the cultural rights. And the United Republic of Tanzania subscribes to this approach to the promotion and the protection of human rights. Indeed, our founding father, Morif Julius Kambaradi Nyerere, and the Nationalist Party, known as Tanganyika African National Union, fought for the independence of Tanganyika, used the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is a clear call for self-determination of Tanganyika. Therefore, the government continues to work towards Tanzanians enjoy civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights. Distinguishing the challenge of the 1960s to 1980s in the realization of human rights in independent Africa led the African to look and provide an African solution and a system of human rights. The human rights and people's rights system moved to further expand the spectrum of rights with the adoption or by the Organization of African Unity of the African Charter of Human and People's Rights in 1981. This comprehensive human rights treaty recognizes rights as well as people's communities which are central African society. Therefore, the African Charter is a progressive framework for the promotion of both and the people's rights. Distinguished guests, the promotion and protection of economic, social, and cultural rights is important in the Republic of Tanzania, is a catalyst to the development of the people of Tanzania, enhancing and respecting their dignity as people and as a sovereign state in the community of nations. Economic rights are being promoted and protected, and last year, Tanzania was categorized a middle income economic country by five years ahead of the time of meeting its objective as planned in our national development vision 2025. This great was achieved through strategic social economic interventions such as anti corruption, fines, involvement of public funds, tax compliance by squarely addressing the problem of tax evasion which resulted in increased revenue for development matters. The right to education, clean and safe potable water, decent housing, and food are important to Tanzania as they are part of the economic, social, and the cultural rights. To achieve that, several interventions enhancing bases such as access to education through the fee-free policy with a monthly allocation of 10.3 million US dollars. This is increased student enrollment in public schools from 8 million to 244 in 2018 to 10 million 460,785 in 2020. And the students enrolled in public secondary schools from 1 million 469,589 in 20 to 2 million 172,256 in 2020. The right to health provides an essential service, and the government increased the health facilities in their totality from 7,680 in 2016 to 8 
meet the 8,537 by July 2021. Further, clean and safe potable water has been a total by July 2021 reached 72.3 in rural areas and 86 uh, percent covering in urban areas. There have also been concerted investment in rural electrification through the operationalization of rural energy in 2007, 2007. And by 2020, Tanzania was the leading country in Africa achieving rural electrification coverage at 74%. The government of the Republic of Tanzania also received political rights. Free and fair local government elections were held in 2019, followed by free and fair national elections in October 2020. Tanzania to create a favorable environment to promote freedom of expression and access to information by advocating for media pluralism. As a result, there are country 48 television stations, of which three are owned, 500 online TV stations, 270. Uh, newspaper and print publications, out of which two are state owned and 200 radio stations and 20 uh, uh, online stations and 102 blocks. Distinguished guests, as a nation, we underwent a trying period on 17th of March 2021 with the untimely demise of the former president of the Republic of Tanzania, his Excellency Dr. John Pombe Joseph Magufuli. And a highly respected patriotic son of our land. The nation was deeply engulfed in grief, however, having a solid constitution with provisions that clearly articulate the transition of presidential power in such a nation, and a compliance to the principles of good governance and political maturity has enabled the smooth and peaceful transition of power to Her Excellency Samia Suhu Hassan, whose principled leadership has challenged the resolve of Tanzania in realization of its development agenda. to add that each country has the right to pursue a development model as sovereign state. The right to be respected. We are currently witnessing the global development agenda becoming a human rights approach to development as the universally claimed development goals are indeed human rights oriented. The SDGs are comprehensive and inclusive. In the case of the United Republic of Tanzania, these principles have also been incorporated in our development plans, as Tanzania is currently implementing its five-year development focusing on realizing competitiveness and the industrialization for human development. The norms and values of the third five-year development plan recognize the purpose of national unity and the social cohesion, rule of law, respect for human rights, equitable society, and peace and security that resides for sustainable and inclusive social development. Distinguishing this, most recently, has become a proponent of the Southern Rights Forum since its founding in 2017. This is an important platform to promote the development of and the human rights progress of developing countries. It is a unique forum. Through the, uh, the, there will be three specific challenges. We also share many challenges. It is through international and regional collaboration under narrative, such as the SDGs objective to leave no one behind and the African Union agenda to, to develop the Africa that we can focus our common we are all the firm opinion that we need to include concepts and mechanisms in our South South outlook towards human rights and, and uh, development. Distinguished guests, I am indeed honored to address the assembly and I commend the government of the People's Republic of China for this year. takes this opportunity its full support towards this endeavor. Indeed, I do for this session. Many thanks to Minister Kabudi. I had the honor to interview him once, and it's very good to see him here and to hear our friends from Africa share their action and their progress made through human So, indeed, congratulations to all. Next, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jiang Shi Heng, 
Vice President of the China International Knowledge on Development. 让我们有请国国际发展知识中心副主任蒋希恒女士，请。Distinguished guests, Karen Bay and who are joining us from online, it is now to participate and address at the plenary session of 2021 Human Rights Forum on the innovation and the work that is uh, done by the Chinese people of CPC. The founding of the Chinese Communist Party of China over the past 100 years, the Chinese people have, uh, made, have been working tirelessly to, to ensure and realize their independence and, uh, and uh, people's status as master's countries under the leadership of the CPC. The two goals, uh, one is rapid uh, economic development and social stability and achieved. We have completed the first centennial target for the development, and China has built a moderately prosperous in all respects and eliminated poverty. Absolutely, the Chinese people first has always been asked and guided in the of China. First, development is for the people by the people. This embodies the fundamental development of Chinese economy and society. The CPC has made its foundation to provide a service to hold serve its people wholeheartedly and put the take the well-being of the Chinese people and rejuvenation of the Chinese nation as its binding goals. Rallying a people to fight for national independence, liberation of people, and also to build China into a prosperous and strong nation. China has made a fight in this regard. Putting people has been the guiding and um, distinctive feature of uh, the development of the CP in all aspects across all sectors. Putting people in the first place, people, putting, people, putting people the first uh, is only a development goal, but also where draws forces from. To stick to the path of, uh, of development for the people, by the people, uh, and the countries are also the people. Only by so we can draw resources for development and sustain our development. After the 19th century, in the Western world, democracy was used to a single model of electoral this uh, run the risk of uh, being dictated by a handful of uh, the rich and powerful. This is in itself against uh, the notion of uh, real democracy. Whole process people's democracy advocated in China not only represent people's walks of life, including workers, peasants, elite, and uh, community level representatives. It is not for all, for the mass, but rather than a few elite. Apart from electoral procedural uh, elections, uh, the Chinese people in general can also participate extensively in the country and in managing in daily decision making and relative matters. The party and its government has values to listen to it. It is more extensive, more fully tested, uh, and uh, the participation is also more extensive than that of uh, the West. Whether a country is democratic or not depends on the people's attitude. There is a report the Center for Democratic Governance Innovation in 2003 to 2006. They have conducted a service in China. They have talked to 30,000 Chinese people in both rural and areas. Areas. And the conclusion of that report is that since 2003, the Chinese women, the Chinese people have been having increased satisfaction towards the government. The satisfaction rate of the Chinese people towards the Chinese government is 93.1 percent. With the set with 1.4 billion people, and in 2015, 
okay. they call insurance word more than but, uh, its whole population, the basic old age pension of nearly one bit. The nine year compulsory education is uh, all the that are eligible for schooling. In fighting against the pandemic, this party and all the gov Chinese government also had adopted the same philosophy first and people's life and health first and save every patient who are uh, who are suffering this uh, pandemic any China was successfully cur curbed the pandemic spread and uh, pre putting in a normal status of its social and state work in 2021 uh, by the by November one China has provided eight billion doses of vaccines to more than one hundred countries. The whole year of twenty twenty one has provided and will provide uh, will strive to provide more than two billion doses of vaccine to the rest of the world. All of this has been proved China has delivering its promise. China's democracy is true. And it comes comprehensive. China has provided our own um, answers towards how to, to pursue human rights with our thousands of civilization. That is, the answer is to put people put of your development philosophy and practices and also to into South South Korea. Just now, Vice Deputy Minister of uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs have said that uh, China has always uh, been put first uh, in developing its human rights development, also economic and social development. My center shares the same philosophy and um, ideals, and we are we need to take hands with uh, friends from the world in advancing the human rights development the talk, and I'm sure that journey will continue. Next, please welcome Mr. Vladimir Orov, Secretary General of the Shanghai Corporation Organization. Please take a look. В этом контексте форум ЮК ЮК является заслуженно авторитетной площадкой для обсуждения текущей правочеловеческой ситуации и новых вызовов, с которыми стал безусловно современным кризисом, требующим беспрецедентных мер, является COVID-19, нарушив привычный миропорядок, она проверяет настолько не только политические и экономические темы многих стран, но и механизмы реализации основных прав и свобод человека. К сожалению, вирус уносит множество из жизни и того, что прежде нам было очень дорого. Мы не должны допустить to ensure and freedom. Unfortunately, many people lost because of the pandemic, and also many people have lost some dear by the pandemic. However, we will never let the pandemic to destroy our core values, nor we will let them to increase inequality in a lot of when we are already seeing some suffering by some people in the world. Under this pandemic crisis, that is before we need more than ever a comprehensive global approach to respond to the needs of the civil society. 
the restrictions of the anti-pandemic should be inextricably linked with the human rights and protection of protecting human health and life as priority, we should introduce measures to eradicate the pandemic, but also to have timely medical assistance. We should never make it as to not provide medical to those being discriminated. Everybody is entitled to health of the right to health. That that is one of the most important standards of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. We call for a collective efforts, and we highly regard this experience. China has provided in total 1.7 doses of vaccine to more than one countries in the world. We should also on the mental health of the society. Domestic violence is during the pandemic by 33, according to a study by the isolation period for many women and children, home has not uh, is no longer safe and usually can fear for them. We are not we should not only the medical resources uh, accessibility, but also the human rights. Uh, we should, in particular, reach out to those vulnerable groups, elderly, the encouraged, the disabled and also the house for those are people who are ex under the risk and exposure to get affected by the virus because of no access to sanitary facilities and food and housing COVID-19 is not only a health issue so a virus that will have exclusion and segregation we have read from the media coverage that because of uh, Asia and America have accused uh, ungroundedly uh, and I've seen that people have used excuse to refuse to provide medical services to immigrants. This information has uh, proved again that international community need to save the the, promote the protection of the rights of the vulnerable groups. Since the uh, for the 20 years since the establishment of organizations, we have uh, hold for the decision of the organization in fighting the challenges and threats. According to the Charter of the United Nations and international laws and internationals, uh, our organization reaffirm the universality, tricks, uh, and intractability and interconnectivity of human rights and the full respect of freedom rights. declaration also introduced under the spirit of the Shanghai spirit, which fully embodies coherent solidarities to find solutions, to seek solutions to peace. And our organization is, more, is willing to hold uh, to provide medical, social, and other support and assistance. During the summit in November, we have adopted, uh, issued an issue. Meetings of presidents of the Supreme Courts of SEO member states are held regularly. Uh, in recent years, through this form of interaction, successful has been accumulated in legal aid, judicial reform, legal services. The Supreme Court of SAO member states is also preparing to exchange experiences on the issue of combating torture and combating illegal immigration uh, activities. And we also need to organize organizations to protect uh, children's rights. We believe that uh, uh, social elements are able to guarantee human rights, for example, um, uh, standard wages, health, and education. We know that currently um, the world economies are faced with uh, they are stuck in stagflation or um, in 
uh, or uh, sliding down. SEO is willing to make its own contribution to combating this challenge and to share our experiences and the practices of our own. Uh, we recommend China's uh, experiences in terms of fighting poverty. In terms of targeted poverty alleviation, China's been making great achievements to eliminate poverty and to prevent it um, uh, from passing to the next generations. All the uh, member states of SEO are participants of uh, promoting human rights. Uh, Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, the current chairman of SEO, was elected for the first time as full members of the United Nations Human Rights Council for the period 2021 to 2023. Uh, Wolobek Hurapasov, the representative of Uzbekistan, was appointed as the vice chairman of the Human Rights Council in 2022. In post-COVID era, we believe that uh, the hope is really in the youth, which means we should consider protecting their rights and to create good environments for them to voice their own demands. At the same time, due to quarantine and distance learning, um, many young people are traumatized mentally and uh, in terms of their careers. Uh, in October, under the initiative, uh, Human Rights Committee worked with 60 countries to pass a resolution in terms of protecting uh, human rights for the young. We have to eliminate all kinds of discrimination uh, led by violence and discrimination, and we should uh, also eliminate some stereotype and xenophobia uh, based on gender, uh, age, and so on. COVID coincides with the 25th anniversary of the signing of Beijing Declaration uh, and uh, Platform for Action. The Declaration Action Plan set out strategic policy goals for gender equality and protection of women's rights, and all SEO member states have made commitment to this. Uh, during the past 20 years, uh, SCO member states have been laid a solid legal foundation for gender equality and uh, um, the uh, women's role in society. Uh, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women and other international convention on women's rights have been ratified and are being implemented, uh, guided by the core principles. Um, the Shanghai spirit will regularly activities uh, related to the women agenda. Such events were held in Beijing, uh, Bishkek, and Dushanbe. Um, we encourage women to get involved in such uh, activities and under such a framework, um, I believe that women can achieve more in the future. I'd like to quote uh, uh, General Secretary Antonio uh, Guterres. We still have a lot to do to realize uh, uh, gender equality, but uh, um, generally, SEO has been devoting a lot in this regard. Uh, in the end, I wish your work uh, full success and to help uh, member states to tap their uh, potentials to um, help developing our work. Uh, next year is the year of a tiger. The new year is around the corner. I know that according to the Lunar New Year, according to the Lunar calendar, the new year will will arrive upon us uh, in uh, February of 2022, and uh, I wish you peace, stability, welfare, and prosperity of all forms in the year 2020. We hope to see a better year in 2022, a year that brings to you. Thank 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 you.
He'll be leaving Beijing very soon, so we'll miss him very much. Next, welcome Mr. Lu Guangjing, Secretary General of China Society, Human Rights Studies. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, good afternoon. Today, I'd like to talk about protecting and promoting human rights elements centered by uh, people. In September 2021, on the 76th UNJ, President Xi Jinping promoted people-centered development and to, to protect and to improve people's livelihood, protect and promote human rights. And we're going to achieve the goal of uh, people-centered, people-shared people development to enhance the sense of happiness, uh, security of uh, Chinese people. This very important initiative combines people development and rights with people as its development as its chosen path and human rights as its goal ever since reform and opening up, especially after the 18th uh, CPC Congress, it has become another important principle of uh, our country. Human rights in terms of uh, human rights poverty is Obstacle. For things, material uh, material is always the first without uh, basic needs like uh, uh, shelter. Uh, there, uh, it is a luxury to so called uh, human rights that is going to countless. According to the statistics, according to international organizations, despite major achievements in the past years, and in spite of this, one billion people uh, lifted from poverty, there are still millions of people left behind. One third of the population are still living behind the poverty line. And there are 800 million people in absolute poverty. In countries, 36% of population uh, live under 3.1 a day, and uh, half of the children are living in uh, absolute poverty. And now, there are over 300 million poor people developed one third of them are children. A poverty alleviation uh, are facing setbacks due to COVID 19. According to uh, latest statistics, uh, World Bank, the newly added poor people will be 119 million to 120 uh, million. So, believe that uh, this figure will even go up to 140 million to 163 million. In 2022, it is estimated that uh, altogether 274 million people in the world will need urgent aid. Well, this figure equal to uh, the population of the fourth population. Uh, these are telling us that uh, human beings are still haunted by poverty. And uh, the solution lies in development. As many developing countries, China used to be an important country. China by want and fear too. Ever since 1960s, since uh, the reform and opening up, the uh, Communist Party of China insisted that it prioritize development. After 40 years of uh, 
work now we have uh, historically solved in absolute poverty, which has created a miracle in human rights development. China has formed a whole set of effective practices, and we have accumulated many um, experiences. I'd like to briefly share with you, first, to prioritize development as uh, China's governance, to fully concentrate on development, and uh, China's never been interfered by any external forces. Uh, China's practices have also uh, drew interest and uh, attention from experts globally, including Amatia. In his preamble of uh, his new book, To Perceive Development from the uh, Perspective of Freedom, he said, that uh, development is a process of interdependence, and a successful economy cannot be separated from social, political, and cultural elements. So the world is watching China, and uh, the world is following its uh, comprehensive development. Second, um, China sticks to people-centered philosophy, which means uh, to put people first and to make the uh, aspiration of a better life at this goal. And we guard our uh, work against people's uh, standards. Third, to realize the rights of development in its practice. It can only be achieved in the process of developing. Countries provided the opportunities for the people. So without development, there is no right of development. To achieve right of development in the process of development, we can provide new opportunities for the realization of other basic rights. Fourth is to drive other um, forms of human rights with uh, the right of development. It is clear in the Universal Declaration, development of rights is the basic human rights, and everyone, every state uh, can enjoy this economic, social, and cultural, political rights. Fifth is to incorporate human rights into our development strategy. China has been following planned and coordinated uh, development plan. Uh, we have, uh, the Chinese government has already formed four periods of uh, national human rights plan, action plan, um, touching upon many fields. In this document enacted, they have all incorporated uh, human rights protection in their agendas. Thank you. Very Thank you, Chair Secretary Lu. For other countries who are eager to find out exactly how China did it, and many thanks for that crystallization. Next, please welcome Mr. Hector Constance Rosales, Ambassador and Permanent Representative of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela to the UN offices in Geneva. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I thank the People's Republic of China for organizing this year's South-South Forum on Human Rights Edition. I would also like to thank the distinguished panelists for their important statements through this important event. In my remarks, I will refer to the current challenges of multilateralism in human rights, which is part of the sub-theme on multilateralism and the global governance of human rights. We must bear in mind that since the birth of the United Nations, multilateralism in the field of human rights, one of the pillars of the post-world order, has been in constant evolution with the proliferation of national and regional structures parallel to the universal human rights system, 
with the aspiration to give effect to the principles contained in the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights of 1948. The UN Charter clearly states that the members of the organization should foster friendly relations based on respect for the sovereignty of states and on the principles of equal rights and self-determination of people, which should lead us to reaffirm faith in the fundamental rights of man, in the dignity and value of the human person, and in the equal rights of man and woman, as well as nations large and small. However, the current multilateral human rights scenario is a center of geopolitical confrontation where hegemonic countries continue to promote notions and concepts to justify the daily aggressions against developing countries to consolidate political and economic domination. Under this logic appeared, for example, the concept of responsibility to protect, and I quote, to overthrow legitimate governments, causing death and destruction. In the name of human rights, illegal unilateral coercive measures are imposed that undermine the enjoyment of the fundamental rights of the affected peoples. Of course, we condemn that UCM as illegal and as absolutely mm, crimes of, um, against the humanity. These countries also promote the prevention approach to supposedly avoid human rights violations, a concept that is recurrently and politicized used against the countries of the South. In doing so, they seek to establish a direct link between the Human Rights Council and the Security Council, which is not a mandate of the Council, which is a subsidiary body of the General Assembly to which it reports on its work. Moreover, although the Vienna Declaration established that democracy, development and respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms are interdependent and mutually reinforcing concepts, and that democracy is based on the freely expressed will of the people to determine their own political, economic, social and cultural regime. Insist on approaching the subject of democracy and human rights under the Western approach and vision with frequent smear campaigns against democratic models of the countries of the South in an attempt to impose their models of democracy, deliberately ignoring their political, cultural and historical particularities. It is a kind of conceptual dictatorship supported by the global mass media, which forces us to maintain a permanent state of alarm due to the danger of the consequences derived from the Western hegemonic conception. Dear friends, it is the obligation of the countries of the Global South to understand the urgent need to act cohesively and collectively to defend multilateral institutions in the field of human rights, to prevent them from once again becoming an instrument of politicization, selectivity and double standards at the service of the hegemonic interest that caused the collapse of the defunct Commission on Human Rights. Genuine dialogue and cooperation, its fundamental pillars, must prevail in the United Nations Human Rights Council and promote concerted actions to face the planet's challenges since the very substance, subsistence In this regard, the challenges facing humanity call for a democratic and equitable international order that promotes respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms on an equal footing, in keeping with the principles and purposes enshrined in the United Nations Charter of respect for sovereignty, territorial integrity and non-interference in the internal affairs of states. Given the exacerbated inequality between the developed countries which tend to impose their hegemonic interests, and the rest of the developed world, we call for a multilateral environment at the service of the well-being of the planet's inhabitants within the framework of the cooperation that the world needs. The protection of human rights is a common cause of the community of nations that demands 
a council free of selectivity, politicization and double standards to fulfill its mandate. And a genuine multilateralism that promotes the values of democracy, friendly relations and respect among the nations of the world, a challenging but achievable task that is still pending. I thank you very much and I wish you all the success in this important event. Thank you. Many thanks to Mr. Rosales. Indeed, we have to guard against the tendency to use human rights as or democracy as a rule for power politics and hegemony. Next, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a very special guest. She is an athlete of the Chinese team to the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games, Ms. Dai Jia Meng. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Dai Jia Meng. I'm in the women's volleyball team, national team. In the 2020 Tokyo Paralympics, the Chinese national teams have won 96 gold medals, 51 bronze medals, broke more than 29 world records, ranking the first in five consecutive years in Olympic Games, in Summer Olympic Games. At the closing ceremony of the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games, we were praised by President Xi Jinping as very valiant and courageous. It was a summary not only of the national team, Olympic team, but also the Chinese people. I'm very honored to represent the my teammates and to share with you how I have become a basketball player. I was born in Beijing when I was four because of a car accident. I suffered a disability and I couldn't move for the body, uh, the body, the legs after uh, beneath my knees. I was deeply disturbed and distorted by the disability. I all have always liked uh, uh, playing basketball. However, when I found that found out that I couldn't play basketball as uh, my friends did. And uh, when I realized that I couldn't take part in this exercise anymore, I was very distressed. In 2008, Beijing held uh, the Summer Olympic Games and Paralympic Games. I was at home and I watched uh, eagerly, earnestly, uh, the games brought basketball on wheelchairs have led to uh, engraving impressions on me. Then I came to re it was then that I came to realize that I don't need to be able to run to play basketball, wheelchair could uh, work as my legs because basketball has always uh, been my passion um, for its uh, for the, the charm of the movement. When I watched the players in the national teams, they could play basketball, they move swiftly, beautifully and professionally. I found a way to realize my dream, and I decided to pursue my dream. And I joined the Beijing team of the basketball players on wheel, uh, wheelchair. We trained very hard, and uh, I could play better than before, and I could stronger than before. I, my hands were uh, 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 rough before than before, but uh, through hard work and training in 2013, and through 2015, we won the national champion for three times and uh, was selected to be a player in the national team in 2015. I've been playing for the national team for over seven years. We have all together won more than three times regional champions, two times uh, Asian Games uh, champions, and uh, Championship, champions of other regional games. 
Every time when I heard the national anthem being played out uh, at the stadium and uh, seeing the national flag of China flying high, I couldn't feel but uh, being proud of uh, my country and myself. Um, my players who have been there with me, we trained hard. We have, were lucky to have a very professional uh, trainers and coaches. Without the support of uh, the Association of Disabled Persons of China, we wouldn't be able to achieve these achieve make these achievements. The government of China has uh, built a platform for us to uh, realize our dreams. Our individual interests were made possible because of the collective efforts offered by the country. I was uh, enrolled into the Beijing Sports University to pursue academic studies. I, were, I opened my horizon and I made new friends and I gained more uh, knowledge through four years of rigorous academic studies. Being the one of the Olympic teams is one of the most glorious experiences for me. In the future, I will continue to play better games and to create a better life. There's one quote I like that if God closes the door, it will leave, uh, will open a window for you. I think that uh, is true. At least it's true that uh, the country has made it possible for us uh, to play basketball. It has brought sunshine, love, and happiness to our life. It provided the possible equality and equal rights to play uh, sports. As the uh, presidency said, uh, uh, no one is left behind in building China into a modern society in all respects. China is getting stronger, and I feel in accordingly. Disabled, disabled people like me are also enjoying better rights in our lives and more conveniences in our life. As we are marking into a an increasingly prosperous society and increasing prosperity in China, we, a disabled person, are enjoying a lot more accessible facilities, medical resources, and assistance. We spend more time outside of our home because of this uh, accessibility. Of the, uh, because of these accessible facilities. I feel proud to be living in such a great country. I hope that my story could be inspirational to many others who have shared the same dream and to be brave and to embrace the society and your life because our country has provided so favorable conditions for us and to pursue the, li the value of your life. Literally, Jia Meng means good dreams. So we hope that she will keep pursuing these dreams and more of her good dreams come true. Bravo. Next, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Tom Svart, who is the director of the Cross-Cultural Human Rights Center of uh, joining us from Amsterdam Freedom University. The adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights by the United Nations General Assembly in 1948 turned human rights into a topic of international interest. The delegates drafting the Universal Declaration, who came from very different traditions, were intent on and did succeed in drafting a document which does justice to all civilizations and worldviews. In other words, they went out of their way to turn the Universal Declaration into a big tent. However, from the outset, liberals from the global north have tried to portray the Universal Declaration as a tribute to liberal values, such as individuality, personal autonomy, choice, and secularism. As a consequence, while the human rights performance of countries was being assessed, they were actually being judged on the extent to which they had adopted liberal values. Therefore, human rights increasingly became a global liberal social engineering project. Countries which did not embrace the liberal interpretation of human rights were portrayed as failing to meet their human rights obligations. Portraying the Universal Declaration as an exercise in liberalism is ahistoric and erroneous. In addition, 
The claim that human rights should be equated with liberalism is also quite dangerous. Thus, there are growing signs that liberalism is losing its grip on the international order. Therefore, by continuing to equate human rights with liberalism, they too run the risk of losing their significance. As a consequence, it is important to put human rights on a new sustainable footing. The concept of building a community of shared future for mankind, which was launched by President Xi Jinping, can very well serve as such a new basis for human rights. According to President Xi, harmony ought to be a key component of the community of shared future for mankind. In his view, harmony flows from cultural diversity. Civilization should draw inspiration from each other's differences. According to President Xi, the differences between these civilizations should be bridged through exchanges and mutual learning. Civilizations should enrich themselves by seeking wisdom and nourishment from others. President Xi has made clear that states should abandon the zero-sum game of the winner-takes-all and should opt instead for win-win cooperation. Therefore, states are supposed to accommodate the interests of others while they are pursuing their own. President Xi has also emphasized that within a community of shared future for mankind, all countries should respect one another and treat each other as equals. Being a big country shoulder, means shouldering greater responsibilities for world peace and development rather than seeking greater monopoly over world affairs. A good way to, to gain strength from diversity, take proper account of different interests and show respect for other traditions than one's own is to adopt the so-called receptor approach to human rights. This approach has been developed by an international group of scholars, most of whom are from the Global South. The receptor approach underscores that people in the Global South are making great efforts to promote and protect human rights in a way which is often overlooked by liberal observers. In doing so, the people are relying on their own social resilience, the remedial force of their local culture and their own agency and therefore, they do not need to be saved through liberal social engineering. To promote and protect human rights, people in the Global South usually count on their social institutions. These are cultural strategies which they deploy to deal with important social questions. These social institutions that match international human rights obligations can be identified by conducting anthropological research. When these social institutions fall short of the human rights obligations, they can be amplified with the help of homegrown remedies. Through research, a large number of human rights protecting social institutions have already been discovered. Thus, in South Africa, NGOs offer women who have fallen victim to domestic violence skills training and support in setting up small businesses, which allows them to close the door on their violent relationships. In Senegal, women were able to successfully engage in commercial activities to supplement the family income during an economic crisis with the help of their Quran reading clubs, through which they supp supplied each other with microcredits, business advice, clients, and support during illness. In China, mentally ill children turned out to face less stigma if lay labels were used to describe their illness such as thinking too much, rather than psychiatric terms such as schizophrenia. The object and purpose of the Universal Declaration is to ensure that the rights laid out in this document will be brought to life by the people in their relations with other people. The people are not only the beneficiaries of the rights enshrined in the Universal Declaration, they're also expected to ensure that their fellow human beings will be able to enjoy them. Therefore, putting the people first is a core element of the Universal Declaration. By relying on the resilience, the cultural force, and the agency of the people, the receptor approach honors the putting the people first objective of the Universal Declaration. Thank you very much. Many thanks to Professor Zwart, interpreting human rights from a very cross-cultural 
and academic perspective. Next, let's welcome Mr. Mohamed Yunus, renowned Bangladeshi banker and Nobel Peace Prize and Olympic laureate. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Thank you for inviting me for this forum. And I'm happy to be with you and try to share some of my worries, some of my thoughts uh, in the context of the global warming and also in the context of the COVID-19. COVID-19 has been going on for nearly two years now and it's getting worse, it's not getting better. We don't know how long we have to continue on this. But what this has done, it has revealed, this has exposed many of the major weaknesses in our system, the economic system, the economic thinking that we have behind all our activities. Suddenly COVID comes and tells us that, that all the things that we have taught before are wrong. All the things that we have done before were wrong, grossly wrong, and we have not much time left in fixing ourselves. When our leaders try to push our economy back to the uh, pre-pandemic situation, quote unquote, their normal situation, that normal is the most, most dangerous part of our system because that normal is actually taking us in a wrong direction. We don't have much time left. We are almost nearing the finishing line. And at that finishing line, we'll be all finished. And that's the danger part that the COVID-19 has revealed to us. Uh, we have seen how the fast train carrying us uh, all in this direction and suddenly COVID-19 stopped it. Now that the train has stopped, uh, we have a great opportunity. That's the point I wanted to share with you. COVID-19 is uh, causing lots of problems around the world, but it has done one, something very positive, that it has given us a chance uh, to rethink, to redesign everything that we have done in the past. And uh, since the train which was carrying us towards our final destruction has a stop, economic machine has collapsed, it stopped. Uh, so this is the time we can get off the train and look for a new train to go to any, uh, to go to a new direction, not the old direction. And that's how the chance is. So I keep saying the basic decision that we have to take now is a decision of no going back. We don't want to go back to the pre-pandemic pre economic system. We want to design a new system and create a new path for us. And I try to remind everybody that uh, if you follow the old path, old path which we are pursuing uh, before the pandemic uh, is a path of uh, uh, destruction, uh, is a, a suicidal path. So how do we go to a new path which will take us to new life? If you follow the old path, you go to the old destination. If you want to go to a new destination, we have to build a new path, new roads. So that's our challenge. We have to create new roads. We have to create new destination. We have to design a new destination. And by designing new destination, we also have to design the path, design the roads to get to the new destination. That's the challenge of today. And that's what we should be pursuing. The things that went wrong in our system, we are rushing to global warming, despite all the scientists telling us uh, that we are nearing our uh, uh, ultimate uh, temperature level that the human being can live with, 1.5 degrees Celsius. And they were recommending that uh, we prepare ourselves to push that limit, 1.5 degrees Celsius, at the end of the century. But now their research, the uh, research of the scientists tell us that we'll be reaching the temperature of 1.5 degrees Celsius at the end of the decade, not at the end of the century. So we'll be there already by 2030. By 2030, we'll be getting to the 1.5 degrees Celsius uh, global temperature. Today, it is nearly 1.2 degrees Celsius. Uh, so if you reach 1.5 degree uh, by uh, 2030, uh, we are entering the red zone. Red zone is uh, something where will be extremely difficult for human beings to survive. So that's we're very near to us. Uh, in the global uh, 
time scale, you know, uh, a decade is nothing. It's just a split second that we have to disappear very quickly. So we have to address ourselves very quickly how to make that happen quickly and address it very quickly uh, by designing things which is not taking us to that path but designing things which will take away from that path. Uh, that's the challenge. And I kept uh, try to draw attention that our house is burning and it's burning very badly. But inside the house, somehow, we are having celebrations, parties inside the house. Uh, it's glorifying the economy, glorifying the technological successes and so on. Forgetting the house in which we are living itself is in fire. So our awareness thing has got very, very blunted. Uh, we don't see the priority. Our priority should be getting out of the house and put, up, put down the fire. That's what is demanded by the present situation, but we are not doing that. So we have to get aware that the, our task is to stop the fire, stop the global warming, and make sure the planet is safe. And then at the same time, uh, we have extreme global concentration of wealth. Uh, all the wealth of the world is concentrated in few hands in few countries. And that's a dangerous path, uh, as bad as the global warming. But nobody talks about it. Uh, even if they talk, it's a about the poverty, about the uh, income inequality. I said, these words don't describe the uh, danger that we are facing. Uh, wealth concentration is uh, uh, taking time bomb. It will explode any time because all the wealth is in the hands of few people and the bulk of the population of the world practically uh, have nothing. So that will create lots and lots of uh, anger in the society and it will create conflict in the society, confrontation in the society. So that's the danger part of it. Uh, we have to make sure uh, we do not continue this path of wealth concentration in a limitless way. We have to stop that uh, global, uh, sorry, the wealth concentration. And at the same time, uh, not only we'll stop it, we'll have to reverse it so that the wealth and people can be together, not separated from each other. Today, they are separated from each other. Wealth is on the one side at the top of this uh, income scale. And the people are on the other side of the income scale. 99% uh, of the people live without any wealth, hardly 1% of the total wealth of the world. When 1% of the population own 99% of the wealth. So the wealth is way up, people are way really down. So we have to make sure we redesign the engine, we redesign the economic system where wealth and people can get together and live together. That's the challenge. Third problem that we are facing is extreme uh, unemployment that is coming up because of the artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is going to replace human beings in all kinds of work, in all kinds of roles. Uh, so human beings will have no, no role to play. They will become some excess in the planet. They have no use for themselves. So that's a very dangerous situation that we will, will be facing. So before it's too late, we have to make sure uh, instead of having 100% unemployment because of artificial intelligence, we make uh, zero unemployment. So that's the direction we have to go. Uh, by unleashing the creative energy of all people. Human beings are born as entrepreneurs. So we should let them play that role. So our education system has to be redesigned. Our thinking process has to be redesigned. Our legal system has to be redesigned. Our banking system has to be redesigned, redesigned so that everybody can become entrepreneur. There's no problem with the people, but the problem with our institutions problem with our conceptual framework, problem with our institutional framework. So why don't you address that, particularly financial institutions? That's where all the problem lies. So we have these three problems, global warming, extreme wealth concentration, and extreme unemployment. So we have to undo all this and go to a new direction. Our goal would be to create a world of three zeros. Zero wealth concentration, zero global warming, and zero unemployment. So these are the three zeros we have to accomplish. And you have to redesign all our thinking process, our education system, and our economic framework to achieve these three zeros. And we want to create a world of three zeros, which will be sort of a new civilization that we want to live. This civilization is built on profit maximization. And that's what the root of all the problems that we created for ourselves. We have to move out of that uh, profit maximization civilization 
a zero profit civilization where we do businesses not to make money but to solve people's problems and we call it social business so we create social business address all the problems we have and then we can create the world of three zeros and that's what uh, our immediate task is and we are encouraging young people to create three zero clubs five young people can get together form a club three zero club and then all these three zero clubs can in, interlink with each other can network with each other so that they can start working for creating that three zero world so that's the ultimate that we have to achieve to create a three zero world to overcome the problems of global warming wealth concentration and massive unemployment and we create the other world zero net, net carbon emission zero wealth concentration zero unemployment by unleashing the entrepreneurial capacity in all of us. Many thanks to Professor Yunus. His messages are loud and clear. Uh, how to achieve those goals are exactly what have uh, brought us here to brainstorm and to discuss and to create synergy moving forward. Next, please welcome former Foreign Minister of uh, Kyrgyzstan, former ambassador to China and former secretary general of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Mr. Muratbek Imanaliev. Прежде всего хочу поблагодарить организаторов настоящей конференции за прекрасную возможность выступить по некоторым проблемам прав человека в развивающих странах. Возникновение новых геополитических разломов, смещение полюсов центров мировой политики и экономики, формирование новых глобальных региональных рынков труда, финансов и прочего сопровождается некоторыми, на мой взгляд, формирующимися зачастую на основе субъективных, личных симпатий и антипатий, специфических тенденций, в частности в области проектирования предполагаемых в будущем международных отношений. Thank you for inviting me. I would like to share with you my thoughts on human rights in developing countries. Now the world, there is an increasing geopolitical rift. Politicalization and the shift of the economic center are also moving to the places that is different from the conventional places. It is also the true to labor and financial market. For me, the last 20 to 30 years, there were very profound reasons for these conflicts and turmoils. Human beings were mired deeply in crisis that is manifested in the view we look at the world in the relation between economic and social sectors and in religions. These are the civilization foundation for the survival of human beings. These are the inextricably linked factors with humanity. The reasons are inc include the reshape of a geopolitical pattern the shift and leverage of uh, the conventional financial and economic center to from the west to the east, South-South cooperation expands its coverage. The economic investments move slowly from north to south. The humanity is uh, in recession and the world is still recovering stagnantly from the heat of the pandemic. The pandemic also has hit hard on the mental health and resilience of the humanity. The, humanity actually, the human beings have actually experienced endless natural disasters in the history. However, disasters in the global scope such as the pandemic is unprecedented. We are faced with a global disaster that has never been experienced by any human beings at all. This pandemic will 
have an impact on the world that is bigger than the two, two world, world, world wars. However, we are still trying to deal with two characteristics of the pandemic. One is that we can still not predict the model in which the pandemic virus is going to mutate. The second is that we cannot have an estimation of how long it will last. What is more shocking is that many countries have not pooled resources to fight against the pain and suffering caused by the pandemic. However, they are pointing fingers at each other. This is the real tragedy during the pandemic. On the other hand, we are not surprised by the behavior of uh, this kind. We have uh, seen these uh, countries have uh, been trying to attack other countries under the name of fighting against uh, terrorism. Faced with the challenges brought by the pandemic, some politicians uh, have um, been elusive in the in being uh, and, and in, in being afraid of being held accountable for not delivering their performing their duties they do not only present to be selfish but also they use the pandemic as uh, a weapon to attack their rivals like David Humer once said, the foundation for human societal residence is not moral standards, but should be rationality. If we look at the threats and challenges brought by Afghanistan on Eurasia, you will find that the whole structure of this region is being disrupted and destroyed and damaged. All these problems have a deep link with the human rights, and the links are direct. When they are selfish and when they are shameless and we they and when they are targeting on realizing their own interest, they will ignore or neglect international rules. Those who are infringed upon and those rights that have been violated have become the feed of the ones who exercise these violations. Unfortunately, after in the 70 to 80 years after the declaration was uh, adopted, human rights remain to be an example of uh, social and human rift. Ideology, religion, and economy are all factors to judge whether the human rights legitimacy exists in a country's regime. Under many circumstances, the Western people are not very interested in the substantive nature of human rights, but rather they care about how, what measures they want to pursue in geopolitical rivalries. They actually have deviated themselves from the right path. President Xi Jinping has pointed out in the first developing country human rights summit that human rights is a common values of the humanity. Each and every country, it comes in many forms based on the people. So own choice of uh, the model. This view was uh, was incorporated into the 2005 Global Summit deliverables in international legal uh, frameworks. The most direct linked right to human right is the right to development. But the problem is that while well, developing countries are committed in, the, in safeguarding and promoting human rights, developed countries support, however, unfortunately, try to sabotage these um, efforts. The developed countries should work more on providing the human rights protection to those who are in the most need rather than to those rich and powerful and well 
accessed. Eradication of poverty is a constant standard to measure and judge human rights situations. And China, in this regard, has achieved remarkably. In 2019, Beijing, in Beijing, the South-South Human Rights was held. Three more than 300 participants from more than 80 countries and regions exchanged in active dialogues on how to build a shared future for mankind and enhance global human rights governance. To build a shared community for mankind is an important philosophical direction reflected in the contemporary diplomacy of China. It is also a reflection of the deepest foundation for the destiny of human humanity as a whole. Under this framework, the human future of a shared mind, uh, a community of shared mind, uh, future for mankind is not only a fundamental principle, but also it highlights the respect for different cultures, nationalities, and races that are inherently existing, existent in humanity. All people, regardless of their nationality, race, religious belief, are entitled to equal rights. Also, the corresponding obligations, therefore, to build a shared a community of shared future for mankind originates from China. However, it is a concept that is that belongs to the whole world. Thank you. Many thanks to Ambassador Imanaliev. We can see that he has profound understanding of traditional Chinese philosophy and culture, which is uh, really important uh, for us to understand the concepts that China is putting forward. And uh, last but not least, the speaker for our plenary session is Professor Zhang Weiwei, Director of China Institute of Fudan University. Let's welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm very honored to have this opportunity to, tell, uh, to share with you some of mainly the points that we don't agree with uh, the West. This uh, contains as follows. The first is the definition by the UN on human rights. Human rights is actually a comprehensive system that covers rights political rights, civil servants' rights, economic, social, and cultural rights. However, in the Western countries, very often we found that the only emphasis on political and civil rights while neglecting, neglecting economic, social, and cultural rights, especially U.S., does not regard the latter three rights as human rights. In this sense, U.S. really re really need to renew their understanding of what human rights means. They lag really behind. Afghanistan, 数千万人的流离失所，我想对于大多数国家来说，大家都会认为这是大规模的侵犯人权，特别是人的生命权和发展权。这第一个分歧，第二分歧呢是西方啊比较喜欢。Huge violation to uh people's rights of substance and development, and the West 
usually like to discuss the human rights issue from the perspective of the law. For example, currently they haven't. Not a single Western countries have realized the equal uh, gender, equal work, equal pay, equal pay. But uh, this is not a violation to the law, so they believe that they didn't violate the human rights. Um, Actually, in countries with a sufficient numbers of uh, lawyers with a sound legal system, um, this is doable, but uh, in developing countries, it is very difficult to, to realize this goal. So um, in developing countries, from our own perspective, uh, it is more uh, practical to push forward uh, human rights from uh, political ways. Uh, American uh, people still think that uh, poverty elevation is not uh, human rights, and let alone the hu core of human rights. So uh, China is taking a lead in terms of poverty alleviation. Without China's success in poverty alleviation, I believe the third difference is that the Western countries focus on the rights of individuals. They even deny the rights of the collective. To Chinese people, this is ridiculous because Chinese philosophy emphasizes the collective interest. They believe that there is a dialectical relations between the collective and the individual because without interests of the collective, there will be no interests of individuals. Actually, Western countries also focus on interests of the collective. They are under the influence of neoliberalism. They are unwilling to admit this. Back in the 1840s, the UK launched the Opium War. Over the past more than 100 years, Western countries signed more than 1,000 unfair treaties which are imposed on China because back then China was a free country. For example, but China has been always really being focusing on the rights of the collective. The United States has been enforcing more racial segregation for more than a century, which was intended for the protection of the white people of the U.S. and the rights of individuals. The Western countries focus on rights of individuals actually makes sense for them because they are worried that the rights of collective may be abused and undermine the rights of individuals in the end. There is some sense to this worry, but it also shows its deficiency and shortcomings. The abuse of individuals' rights may lead to abuse and undermining damage, abuse of the rights of in the collective. For example, several years ago, a cartoonist of Denmark demonized Muhammad because they believe that individuals' right to speech have been undermined, have undermined the right of freedom, religious freedom of more than one billion Islam Muslims. Denmark and other Western countries believe this is the right to speech which is very different from China. Actually, China focuses on both the rights of individuals and the rights of collective. All countries have their own national conditions, so they should choose their priorities based on their own national conditions. No country can guarantee the realization of all human rights. Instead, they should prioritize some of them. It's, it has been proven that 
China has been prioritizing putting people first, poverty alleviation and modernization, and, put the, and regard them as core human rights, which has been a great success. Wrong, wrongly prioritizing human rights is not only ineffective, but also cause damages. Many developing countries have been under the wrong guidance of Western countries and attempted political oppression. The result has been very much disappointing. In a poverty-stricken country, adopting Western-style democracy may cause bad democracy, as we have seen in Haiti, which has suffered, has been suffering hunger, and, which, and uh, hunger leads to unrest and even anarchy. Formerly relatively developed countries like the USSR and the UK. Yugoslavia have also done similar things and suffered similar consequences, which have, should have given us much food for thought. That's the fifth point. In prioritizing human rights, it should be pointed out that some human rights are universe, are core human rights, and it should be the bottom line of all countries and all civilizations. That, is, that includes the right to not be invaded at any time in any case. For example, we should ban, ban the torture, slavery, and people should have freedom to, of thought and also should be arrested arbitrarily. So in this sense, the mainstream opinions of China and Western countries are not much different. That's why the Guantanamo prison, a torture of prisoners by the U.S. has caused resentment of the whole world because it has undermined the bottom line of humanity. In dealing with human rights issues, our countries can have candid exchanges and share experiences. So they can learn from each other and uh, make progress together. This should be encouraged, especially in the 21st century, when globalization is encountered with many challenges, from global warming to po the COVID-19 control and prevention. Only by cooperation of the international community can we resolve these issues. The per capita resource consumption of Western countries is 10 or even 20 times that of developing countries. But the Western countries' human rights outlook determines that they believe that mine is mine and and should be shared with other countries because it is God-given. But still, if you look at the record of Western countries, you can see that they have not realized equal pay for equal work. Take Afghanistan for an example. The U.S. has spent more than 230 million, 2.3 trillion U.S. dollars, but they have claimed many lives there, and the local people have suffered a lot. In contrast, over the past several decades, China has spent about 250 billion U.S. dollars, which is less than one-tenth of uh, the amount of money the U.S. spent on Afghanistan war. But China has made it to lift more than 100 million people out of poverty, and we have uh, made historic achievement in lifting the people out of extreme poverty. So why does the U.S. Not spend the 2.3 billion US dollars on 
the eradication of poverty of the U.S. the American people, because there are still more than 500,000 people who are homeless in the U.S. and more than 10 million people still in the U.S. still live below the poverty line of the U.S. We can presume that if they spend the, the money on poverty alleviation, the result should be very much different. So much for my speech. Thank you. Inspiring as always. By the way, some people have uh, added one more word to this complex. Instead of uh, industrial military, they say industrial military and media. And sometimes I do tend to agree with them. And on that note, we are going to wrap up the plenary session of uh, the uh, Putting People First and Global Human Rights Governance Forum that uh, we have opened this afternoon. Many thanks to all of you who have been stayed with us for all this time and for all of those, to all of those who have watched us online. So we're going to take another break and our uh, uh, sub-discussions will continue right after that. Thank you so much. <laughs>